I had already mentioned the start of a LaTeX document is a document class command where you specify what class of document you want to create. For example, an article here, and you can specify a couple of options. Uh, the two most commonly used options is that you specify a default font size for the entire uh, document. Uh, 12 point or 11 point is usually more appropriate for an A4 sized document because the 10 point default font size is more suitable for smaller page sizes like you would use in book printing. That's because in typography, normally you don't want to have lines longer than between 50 and 90 characters. And if you use a too small font on an A4 page with sort of two, two and a half centimeter margins, you would go way above 90 characters per line. Um, and scientific publishers often give you their own class files. So if you submit a paper to a journal, then check on their um, web pages uh, whether there are suitable class files available. Typical examples in computer science are the Springer Lecture Notes in Computer Science or the IEEE Proceedings and Journal class files. Um, <clears throat> an environment is anything between a begin and an end. And common environments include not only the document that contains all the uh, typeset content of your document. Um, you can also use um, abstracts to put an abstract at the start of your document. Center will put uh, some text, every single line will be centered and you can separate lines with a double backspla uh, backspace. We're going to look in the next couple of slides at some of the other commonly used environments. And for the headings, section headings, there are three levels, uh, section, subsection and sub subsection. If you're using the book or report classes, there's also one level higher, a chapter heading, and you can go further down with a paragraph heading where you put just something, a bold introductory sentence at the start of a paragraph, uh, which will not be numbered. How do you make bullet item lists? You use the itemize environment and inside the itemize environment, backslash item starts a new paragraph um, indented with a bullet um, in front of every item. You can nest the itemize environments and the LaTeX class will automatically choose another type of bullet. Sometimes <clears throat> you may want to override the default bullet. Simple example would be you have a list of advantages and disadvantages and you want a plus sign and a minus sign in front of advantages and disadvantages. So you can provide an optional argument to item in order to pick individually your own bullet item. The enumerate item is the same, but it gives you an ordered list where uh, some kind of counter increments uh, for each item. And again, you can nest these and LaTeX will automatically use a different enumeration style at each level of indentation. For enumerate items, um, if you want to refer to a particular item, you shouldn't do this uh, manually by referring to, as we've seen above in item four, for example, because later you might edit that item and uh, then everything gets renumbered. What you do instead is when there is an item that you want to refer to by number, you um, declare a label for that item. So you give a symbolic name to the number of that item uh, just by putting somewhere in the text after the item backslash label and then some name I've just used here C. And then uh, if you refer to this elsewhere, the C here indicates this is the list item cucumbers, but cucumbers is under 0b. So you can now refer to with the ref command uh, to item C and that will automatically be replaced with 
uh, 0b. And we'll later see the same label ref mechanism also works for other enumeration such as section numbers and it can also be used for to refer to page numbers of particular items. Um, <clears throat> sometimes you want to override the enumeration sequence and LaTeX has variable types called counters and the first level of an enumeration item is called enum i. This is a Roman numeral to work around the fact that you can't have at the end of a variable name a, um, a digit, uh, therefore internally LaTeX uses Roman numerals to have uh, letter-based digits. Um, and here for demonstration we want to start the enumeration with zero rather than one, so we reduce the enum i counter variable by minus one. A more typical use would be that you have in a text some items enumerated and then you have some intermediate text and later you want to continue the enumeration and then you can set enum i to the value of the uh, previous last item and then when it increments it will continue from there. I also briefly already mentioned but here with an example uh, how do you list uh, lines of source code in the middle of a text. There's the verbatim environment that switches not only to a um, fixed width typewriter font, it also uh, causes every space character to be preserved. So if you have multiple space, they will be printed as multiple space. And it also causes line feed characters to actually start new lines. It also disables all other meta characters such that if there are any uh, dollar signs or backslashes or curly braces or so, they will just be printed out. What LaTeX does internally is it just goes uh, through the input file until it finds on a line of its own the end verbatim statement. So it's important that this is kept on a line on its own, otherwise the parser that searches for that may overshoot. Sometimes you want to typeset pseudocode where you're not using exactly a particular programming language, uh, the syntax of, but where you are uh, using a mix of a stylized programming language and some mathematical notation. And there's several ways of doing this. One particular simple one is the alt-tt package. So if you write uh, in the preamble in the space between document class and begin document, you can load extension packages. And if you load the alt-tt extension package, you get an additional environment called alt-tt. And that works very similar to the verbatim environment. However, three LaTeX meta characters, the backslash and the curly braces, uh, still uh, maintain their meta character properties. So you therefore can, for example, in the middle of the text switch into math mode. Math mode can be switched into either with a dollar sign or with a backslash round parenthesis and backslash round parenthesis. The dollar sign has lost in all TT its meta character functionality, but the backslash has not. Therefore, we use this slightly longer uh, notation to switch into math mode. Likewise, we will soon see in math mode, um, you normally use underscore and circumflex to uh, get access to subscripts and superscripts and you have to use the backslash sb and sp subscript and superscript macros in all tt mode because the other meta characters are not available. And in the middle of a string you can use um, backslash verb and some text. Um, the backslash verb you can't use in the middle of the arguments of another command um, because it's a so-called fragile command that can't be used inside the arguments of another macro. You can either use, um, you can for example use uh, the text tt mode which doesn't change any meta characters but it still switches to the 
um, fixed width typewriter font. There's a verb star variant of that command that also gives a graphic indication of the space character, uh, a little bracket on, on the bottom. Um, that can be useful if you want to explain a syntax where the number of spaces is significant. And another little typographic quirk, if you really care about the precise space uh, shape of quotation uh, signs, um, you will see normally in the verbatim environment, you get a, a curly uh, opening quotation mark, but that is not actually what it looks like on your keyboard. And if you want the straight quotation mark that's used in the ASCII standard and on most keyboards, there is a use package uh, an upquote package that you can use in order to fix that particular problem. So we've already seen a couple of ways of extending LaTeX um, by adding in the um, by adding packages by using, for example, in this preamble. Uh, the space between document class and bidding document, the use package command in order to load additional add-on macro definitions. And hyperref is, for example, a quite comprehensive add-on package that will uh, take all the references that it can find in your document and turn them into hyperlinks such that if you uh, write somewhere uh, as you can see on page 20, and page 20 was actually a page reference to um, a section that starts on page 20, then if you have the hyperref package loaded, the number 20 will actually become a clickable link in your PDF viewer, and that helps your readers to navigate easier through an online document. Such uh, packages, uh, their documentation can come in a wide range of uh, formats. Some of them have PDF files, some of them come with postscript files, some have plain text files, others have web pages. Um, there is in TechLife a very useful tool called TechDoc. You just give TechDoc the name of a LaTeX package and it has a built-in database. It knows for every um, package that has been packaged up with TechLife where the documentation is found and then it will display the documentation to you. And some example settings that you can also make in the preamble by changing some of the variables. Um, here a fairly complicated example, if you want to modify the page layout, there are lots of um, internal variables that LaTeX has that control the page layout, odd side margins, uh, margins on the sides on even numbered pages, how uh, wide is the text, uh, how much space do you have above the first line and below the last line and so on. Um, but that's quite complicated. Fortunately, if you want to change the size of your document, uh, um, you can use the geometry package. So after document class, you just write use package and then you can uh, specify, uh, for example, the vertical margin 20 millimeter, the horizontal margin uh, 25 millimeter. That's a very common thing to do because the default margins for A4 paper are a bit at the large end and you get much more text onto your page if you uh, make them between just two or three centimeters wide. Um, another very common change that people make is how new paragraphs are indicated. By default, LaTeX will um, not have an empty line or any space between paragraphs, but just put a 20 point indentation into the first line of every new paragraph. Some people want to have no indentation at the first line of a paragraph and instead want to have a little bit of 
space roughly an empty line between paragraphs if you want to do this you can change in the preamble the variable par indent to zero millimeter and the variable par skip to a met skip amount a met skip is one there are variables uh, there are commands small skip medium met skip and big skip to get some additional space inserted between paragraphs and here we say that after every paragraph we want to have a medium skip automatically inserted and there's also a par skip package that does that and also makes some adjustment to the itemize and enumerate in other list environments such that their spacing is also slightly adjusted to match these conventions better <laughs>